We've tested a number of Sonic titles on multiple Sega machines, from the Sega Game Gear all the way up to the Mega CD, and we've encountered some very interesting and exciting results so far in the series. But with all that eagerness, I think we need to stop for a moment and just come back down to Earth. Did I say Earth? I meant Saturn! In today's episode, we're going to be challenging all publicly known prototypes for the ill-fated Sonic Extreme. While all three examples demonstrate their own strengths and weaknesses, they're all short in terms of screen time. And that's where this homebrew game, Sonic Z-Stream, introduces more playability. So we'll be putting this fan game through its pace. Up to this point, all the footage you've seen so far has been recorded using the Sega Saturn emulator, SSF, version 0.12. But I know what question is on your mind. When am I going to get a haircut? I mean, does it work on real hardware? Well, let's fire it up. To get these games running, we need to burn them to some CDR discs. It's as simple as popping in a blank CD, burn the ISO, done. You may have to manually write the game name yourself. But hold on! This is the Sega Saturn, and is a little wiser compared to the Mega CD. Just plonking your reproduction into the system will only make your console whine. It only reads official copies of the game due to its protection ring, which is missing from our replicas. To bypass this, you can do the very easy disk swap method every single time. You can try installing a pseudo Kai into an action replay cart, or you can install a phantom mod chip into the contraption itself, which was the route I took. It was surprisingly easy and cheap to do, and I'm not even a modder. No menus to navigate through, no potentially damaging disk swap tricks to pull off, just insert your burned media, and away you go. Let's start from the beginning and go with the very first prototype, Sonic Extreme version 40. Let's have a glimpse of what we could have had. Oh, no, come on, come on. No, no, oh, not a, not the greatest of starts here. I'm not sure if it's actually loading up. It's been like, I don't know, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. Oh, 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 no, there we go. Oh, wow. That took about 30 seconds to load. So we're presented with a very simple blue checkered landscape and no sound at all to please our ears. With some solid rings and badniks which you cannot collect or destroy respectively. They add like solid blocks. You literally levitate on top of them. But here we get to experience that fish eye lens. I mean, it's okay, but with its minimalistic scenery, it's hard to judge if it could have worked in the final presentation. Although, it gives you a good idea on how much it can drag the game down. Gordon Bennett, look at that frame rate! When you float into the air, yes, Sonic has infinite jumps for some reason, the frame rate drastically increases. But with the exception of Sonic looking like he's desperate for a pee, there really is nothing else going on here. Does Sonic Extreme version 40 work on real hardware? Officially, yes. Let's spice things up a bit and trial the Sonic Extreme 14th of July build. With this game, it's near instant loading, which actually took me a moment to even realise. It doesn't help that there's still no sound, and it's immediately clear we'll be experiencing a lot more with this build. Sonic is looking clean. I mean, seriously, he looks surprisingly good. The property here is much more vibrant and plenty of detail to gaze on, albeit I can't say good things towards the map design. I kept getting stuck here and there with no way out. There's no death plane when you fall off the land. It still very much feels like a testing ground. But so be it, at least we can interact with some objects such as destroying enemies and even losing rings by walking into them. And the rings, static or scattered, are collectible, but that's about as much as you're going to get. It is possible to go into debug mode and freely move around, however it seems impossible to place or change any items or transform back into the blue hedgehog. Once you're in this manner, you're in it indefinitely. It's all good stuff so far, but from what I can tell, there is no option for the fisheye lens. Still, we can do this! Hey! 
You can only tilt the camera slowly to the left with the L button. R fails to do anything, but it's cool nevertheless. So, does this Sonic Extreme prototype work on real hardware? Very much so. The final prototype comes four days later, with a July 18th build, and I can't imagine that much has changed. I take that back, that looks completely different. <laughs> While we actually have a splash screen this time around, despite it being a very small static logo, we're pushed into Jade Gully soon, with Quartz Quadrant Good Futures theme in the background. Well, at least we have some music this time. The sound effects are still absent, however. So, what have we got here? A very bumpy terrain, with Sonic climbing them without breaking a sweat. In fact, his acceleration is through the roof with this prototype. He's quite a handful to control. We have some odd looking diamonds which do nothing, with the exception of the initial gem which shoots you into the air. Okay. Non collidable flickies, a riverbed that actually ripples itself, the HUD doing its own thing. There's not a lot going on here. After some research, this build was assembled with, which was dubbed, the Boss Engine. You can even see some leftover graphics if you look hard enough. And another secret is, if you pause and press C, you'll get the game over screen, but then you're thrown back into the level. It's my regret to say that I couldn't find any camera tricks or any fisheye lenses, no options like that. But at least it runs at a solid 60 frames per second. That's pretty neat. Does the final public extreme prototype work on real hardware? Yes. Well, that's all the prototypes done, but we've got one more game to try. Built from scratch, this is Sonic... said stream? C stream? Hang on, where is the creator from? Spring Yard Zone. Fantastic. I'll just call it C stream, that's probably what it is. You start off with a couple of sweet splash screens. Ooh, ooh, yeah, I feel your pain there. Oh. Then in comes the total screen which contains a menu. How about that? In options, it asks which frame rate you would prefer. Obviously, I chose 60. We'll start off with Sonic, real-time light on, and with pseudo fish eye, I left that off for the most part, because it doesn't actually make use of the lens. It just makes the camera zoom out a bit too far for my liking, and it hinders the performance of the game. There are four short acts to trial. Jade Gully, Crystal, Red, core, I'm a lucky boy, and Galaxy. I'll admit, Sonic looks more pixelated compared to the previous two showings, but his physics feel accurate. It took me a few minutes to get the hang of the engine, but after that, I felt like a pro. The presentation feels like a cross between the first two prototypes. Back to its original roots, but without any of the filters from the July 14th build. That's not a bad thing, on the contrary, I prefer this look. We've got more than one music track in this too. Some are from the release pack by Chris Sen, the man behind the Sonic Extreme project. And we have some sound effects! Hallelujah! And the best thing about this game? In one 90 degree turn, you can rotate the camera on its C-axis using... Oh, C-Stream, I get it now. This, I believe, is a great addition towards the gameplay, to help you look for those nooks and crannies, or to get an alternate vantage of the map. Another great way to experience the game is with a choice on using two different characters. No, not Tails and Knuckles, unfortunately, but with Metal Sonic, like, literally, he's made of metal, and with a Bad Nick, because, come on, we're on another planet, so why not? The only other option is Extra, which is... a two-player? Excuse me for a moment. Come on, come on, I need an oh, extra player. Oh, me, you know I'm not very good at Sonic. <laughs> because Copper Rule says I'm not allowed to have Pippo on with me, so you'll do. Oh, charming. <laughs> <laughs> This mode is just a split screen mode, with the ability to have an acquaintance with you. Player 2 gets the honour to have infinite lives for a bizarre purpose, and if player 1 gets a game over, you both do. But otherwise there's no rules here, make your own, see who gets to the finish line first, it works flawlessly. Does Sonic C stream work on real hardware? Yes. We have a clean sweep ladies and gentlemen!
It's always nice to get inside info on how the game was being made, or how well it would have performed for our home consoles. And with Sonic C Stream still being worked on, I definitely look forward to the next update. But for now, give it a try yourselves, you won't be disappointed.